That's me. Just call me Joe. Yeah. There's no Mr. in front. Don't have to call me Sir. Mr. Just Joe would do. I'm 45 years of age and I come from Kuala Lumpur here in Malaysia. Currently, it's about 7.15 yeah, uh, Malaysian time, PM. And um, my background, in terms of my professional background, I have always been in advertising, marketing, public relations, communications as a whole. Yeah, in general, just pure communication. So I've, I've worked with quite a number of um, multinational advertising agencies. If you're familiar and in your, you're in the marketing and advertising um, industry, you will hear of brands like Dentsu, Ogilvy, TBWA, DDB. These are all multinational advertising agencies that have their offices in Kuala Lumpur. And I've worked on quite a number of big brands such as Michelin, Volkswagen, yeah, um, Case Construction, uh, Shell, and quite a, quite a few more. Yeah? And um, my full-time job now, believe it or not, I make a living working on PowerPoint. Yeah? I've left my corporate uh, employment. Yeah? I, I've left whatever roles that I had in the business world for me to be a full-time PowerPoint specialist, which is something that you don't hear about every day. Normally, PowerPoint is just one of the things that you have to do, right? But uh, for me, it's the only thing that I do now. So let me just quickly explain to you how what, what I do as a PowerPoint specialist. Number one, of course, I do corporate trainings. Yeah? So um, clients will come and um, engage me to train their uh, employees on how to come up with really good looking PowerPoint. That's number one. Uh, number two, I also do what we call a PowerPoint cleaning, which means, you know, some of these companies, they have a proposal or they have a report that they want to share with their management or their clients and things like that. But um, it looks awful. It doesn't look great. So they will actually send their entire presentation to me to actually redesign it and make it look sexy, to make it look cool, right? So... Yeah, so that's another um, income stream on its own, just me cleaning up PowerPoint slides for my clients. And the other thing that I do is also, um, I actually develop all these keynote addresses or presentations for uh, CEOs or the C-levels, yeah? Uh, the chief executives of uh, a lot of companies because these people, they get invited a lot to talk at uh, summits or conferences and things like that. So they want to have a good image. They want to look good on stage and all that. So whatever presentations that they're going to deliver, they will send it to me for me to design it and make it look good the moment it goes up on a very big screen, right? So you can see now that, you know, how I, I can actually leave my entire industry to just do PowerPoint full-time and still, you know, live the lifestyle that I lead, which is great. You know, I, I, I'm doing something that I'm truly passionate about. So. That's all I have to share about what I do. Now we're going to go straight into uh, what, why I'm here today, right? Now, I'm going to talk about how we're going to use PowerPoint as a design tool, right? So, but before that, before I actually share the tricks and the tips and the tools on PowerPoint, I have to share with you the elements of design, things that, you know, things that uh, form a design. Right. This is regardless whether you're using Photoshop, you're using Illustrator, or you're using PowerPoint. These are the elements that will have to be there that you have to put in, you know, or consider putting in the moment you're creating a design. Yeah, I'm gonna break it down into five parts because all I'm sure many of us, in fact, maybe all of us here are not from a design background. So I'm gonna give you a very simple explanation on what these five elements are, right? We're gonna go with line and then we'll talk about shape and then we'll talk about color. We'll talk about size and I'm gonna share with you a little bit about space as well. These are the five key elements that make a design, okay? Now, we're gonna start off with the line part first. Um, a, li a line in a design is actually very simple, yeah? A line can actually show, um, a distribution between you know, content. So if you put a line in between and your content is, an, at, uh, is evenly at the top and the bottom, you know, your content, people will see that 
both of your content, the top and bottom one, is of equal importance. Yeah. But the moment you put your line at the lower, yeah, then there will be you are creating um, what what we call a space where the top part of your visual is the key area, whereas the bottom part is the secondary message because you have created that line to establish the difference between your primary content and your secondary content. A line can also become a design. That means the moment you structure a few lines together, you can create a wave or even a, a digital look. Yeah? If you are presenting something that's related to digital or technology, all these flowing lines can actually you know, form a design. And last but not least, um, a line can also be an element where you, you want to stress on something. Like for instance, you have a sentence, the moment you create a line to put underneath one of those words, then that word which has the line becomes the focus point, right? So lines is one of those design elements that you have to consider. The second one, let's talk about shape a little bit. Um, the shapes that we put into PowerPoint or in general, shapes have three categories. The first category is of course, we call it a geometric shape. You know, these are the ones that you find in PowerPoint, right? Where you have your circles, you have your squares, your triangles, you know, your rectangles, your hexagons and octagons and things like that. So these are the basic shapes and they fall under the geometric category. The second category is basically a natural shape. Natural shapes take form as, um, you know, the, the organic part of, um, you know, the, the shapes, which is basically you have your, you know, whether it's nature, whether it's humans, these are outlines that form things from nature itself. Yeah, so that's nature. The third one is what we call abstract. Abstract shapes are basically lines and, and shapes, which actually, um, you know, the moment you put them together, they can look very organic or they can deliver a meaning. Like if you look at the mid middle one, these are just organic shapes, but if you put them together, they, it represents a fire, right? So anything that when you, when you combine a geometric or natural shape to create um, another form, that becomes what we call an abstract shape. Now, the key thing that why I'm highlighting this, everybody, is because a lot of people tend to make this design mistake. The design mistake that um, non-design people do is they try to combine the different shapes into one visual, right? Some of them, some of them even try to put in your organic shapes with the geometric shape next to it and some extract elements that creates a, the mess. Yeah, you'll be wondering why at the end of your design you're looking at your screen and you go like, why is it so messy, right? What I can tell you that one of the answer is that. When you combine these shapes together, this tree, uh, whether it's geometric, nature, and abstract, when you put them together in one single visual, that will contribute to the overall mess of your design. Try to stick to one, or at the most, stick to two. Yeah, do not try to create multiple elements belonging in different different categories. Yeah. Um, okay, so let me remove uh, clear all drawings. Okay, cool. All right, let's move on. The third one is color. So I've got a couple of tips that I'm going to share when it comes to color later. But before I share about the tips, um, I just want you to understand because I think everybody have, have heard some of these terms that I'm going to share, but you just don't know what it means, right? So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna share it with you now. Colors basically fall in two categories, additive and subtractive. What is an additive color? An additive color um, are colors that come from lights. Yeah, The source of the colors come from colored lights. The best example that I can give you is probably a, a television or even your laptops. Yeah, Your laptops is producing colors because there are um, bulbs and LED lights behind it generating those colors. Yeah, So colors that are generated from lights is known as an additive color. And additive colors, they have three primary colors. I'm sure you've heard of RGB, right? Which is your red, green, and blue. So these are the three 
color. So anybody who says, you know, what's the difference between RGB and CMYK? This is the difference. Yeah. Um, RGBs come from colored lights. Yeah, that's the source. That is the additive color. The subtractive color is basically the ones that come from physical or actual, um, you know, pigments or paints or inks or dyes, you know, the actual physical stuff that you touch. Yeah. So, and the primary colors that fall under subtractive is, of course, uh, I'm sure some of you have heard of CMYK, yeah, which literally means uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. So if anybody, um, all this while in your life, you've been wondering, what's the big difference between RGB and CMYK? This is your answer. Yeah? The, 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 the RGBs generally come from colored lights, whereas um, the CMYKs come from the physical colors, which is paints, your inks, and your dyes, and things like that. Yeah? So I hope that is a, a clear explanation in terms of colors. But I will be sharing a few more tips later as we go along. Another important element in a design is, of course, your size. Yeah? So let's talk about size. Um, a si sizing your, your content. Yeah? When you determine a size for your content, that can really, really help. I'll tell you what it can help uh, you achieve. Number one is having the right size will show importance. When you, when you make something really, really big in your design, the size of that object determines that it is more important than the rest of the objects that you put into your visual. However, you know that doesn't always represent the case because imagine if you have a visual like this, where you have a nice image, a, a nice abstract image of a high jumper, but your text at the bottom is very small. People will still see your visual at the top there, but their eyes will be focused on the text below because it becomes so small that they have to look at it to understand what it means. Yeah. So anybody that says that, you know, if you want people to see it, it has to be big. No, that is not the case. Because the moment if you put it really small, people will be moving their face much closer to the visual. And that's where they start having a focus on that small object. So it's not just about big, um, big is better sometimes small will also attract people to look at it yeah so think about that okay so those are the two things and last but not least let's talk about space this is one of the most severe problems when it comes to designing particularly when people design slides or presentations in powerpoint they've got so much content and they cram so much content into every slide yeah well, I'm sure some of you have had this problem before where imagine if um, you, know, you have developed a 40 slide presentation. You have 40 slides, right? Filled with content, filled with your proposals and whatever not. And then your boss will come and tell you, right? Joe, 40 slides is too much. Can you try to condense it and keep it under five slides? I'm sure some of us, or in fact, most of us, have gone through that pain, right? And I want to put my foot down today and tell all of you here today that the number of slides in your presentation has never been the problem. The problem has always been the amount of content that you cram into each slide, yeah? So that means you are utilizing every single space that you have on each slide, and that is not a good practice, okay? Space can actually, the function of space in your design, of course, when you have a big gap like here, right? Instantly, people will see this as two sets of information. The top one is set number one. The bottom is set number two. And the moment, if you look at the third paragraph, the second paragraph and the third paragraph, the spacing between them is much smaller compared to the first spacing people will immediately have the impression or the idea that paragraph two and three are one set, right? So that's what space can do. Space can split or they can group your information or your content, right? Another function of space, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, is that it can relax the viewer's eyes. The moment you 
play with, you know, the moment you let your visuals or your design breathe, give it a lot of room. Yeah. Go very minimalist, go very simple. Don't try to cram every single area of your canvas with all these elements. The moment you keep it simple, people will be drawn by the simplicity of it all. Yeah. But the moment people see it's congested, it's heavy, there's too many elements involved, that's when they start to look away because you know it increases their stress level. Let's not do that, right? Another function of space is one of the most important ones, which is it can direct your audience's eyes into what they should read first, what they should read next, and what they see at the very last. Yeah. So having a good um, use of spacing between the different sections of your design can help people automatically register where they should look at your visual first. Should they look at the headline first? Should they look in the middle first? Should they see who's the brand and things like that? So having the good, a good play of space will also help lead the audience's eyes into reading your information or your visual correctly. Okay, so let me just recap. So the five elements that you have to, uh, every time you're done with the design, take a step back and see whether you fulfill the use of all these five elements, the lines, the shapes, the color, the size, and the spacing, right? So I hope that uh, at your own time, ladies and gentlemen, in the future, in the very near future, in fact, um, do Google and find you know, um, the elements of design or how does a good design work and things like that. Study a little bit and see what are the variations or the tips that all these designers can share with you because you will start using them when you're using PowerPoint as a design tool in the future. All right, great. So that's done. I'm getting the formalities and the fundamentals out of the way. So now I'm, let's, it's time for my primary reason of why I'm here. I'm here to share with you some really, really cool PowerPoint design hacks, right? Uh, and I'm going to start with the first one. The first design tip that I'm going to share with you is a headline. Because let's face it, all of us here today, when we create a visual for our social media, regardless whether it's for Facebook, whether it's for Instagram, whether it's a poster or a simple message, you will have a headline. Yeah. So now, the traditional way of doing headlines, you know, is, is not something that you want to do because... You, there's a lot of um, typography. Yeah? Typography basically means design using text to form up a design. If you look at the screen now, you know, if you look at all the way, the way these designers have arranged their text, you can see that they almost look like boxes. You know, the sentence has been transformed into boxes just by playing with the different kind of fonts or arranging, arranging it in a way so that it looks like a box and things like that. So if you want to get you know, attention or if you want people to notice your postings and your visuals that you attach to your postings, you can't just go to a traditional uh, single line kind of um, headline like this. So I'll give you a, a, an example of a sentence. The more you perspire, the greater you inspire, right? Okay, so most of us, when we create a header or a headline, we think of you know, using maybe one or two lines like that, like what you see here, right? But ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna share with you a trick and I can guarantee you, the moment you learn this trick and you know how to do it, you will not be making the traditional headlines anymore. You will be so addicted to this technique that every headline that you're going to do from today onwards will be using this, okay? So I'm going to do a quick demonstration. I'm going to con convert the text that you see here into one of this, into this kind of style, where it's going to look like a box and it's going to highlight the keywords and things like that. All right. So pay attention. The, does a version of PPT uh, recent or old matters? Good question, Safi. Um, I would recommend if you're using anything lesser than PowerPoint, 2013. If you're using 2010 and below, there will be a lot of functions that I'm sharing today that you will not be able to use. 
Yeah. My recommendation is that the moment if you have 2013 or 2016 or the latest 2019, those are the safe ones. Yeah. So do check. Uh, and if you're using anything like 2010 and things like that, please, uh, I would really, really advise for you to upgrade, yeah? update and get a, a newer version. But 2010 or below, you'll be in big trouble. There's a lot of functions that you will not be able to do. Yeah. Okay. So I hope that answers your question. All right. Great. Um, all right. Uh, now let's get back to this. So I'm going to share with you how I'm going to convert that design, uh, this simple headline, right? Let me get back to it. This simple headline into a design. So uh, first we have to determine what are the words that we really, really want to highlight, you know? And in this case, I would say the first word that I want to highlight would be perspire. And the second word I want to highlight would be inspire. It's nice because it rhymes, right? It's got a nice, it rolls off the tongue really, really nicely when you put that together. So first things first is I'm going to be turning this into a box. So let me just do a quick demonstration. My first line will be the more you, just like that, right? And then um, I'm going to change this to maybe, a. let's make it bigger. I'm going to change this to a 0.60 size, yeah? So... Most of us, if we want to put perspire in the second line, right? Most of us will just press enter in the same text box, right? Within the same text box, we'll just press enter to go into the second line and then we will type perspire, right? Okay, so I will not do that. Let me show you what I do and I'll explain to you why. Instead, what I will do is I will create a second independent text box. Why I do this? Let me, exp let me demonstrate to you why. Instead of writing it in the same text box, I create a second one. Because now, if we want to create the design like the one I showed earlier, we have to make sure that the corners, that the edges here have a nice alignment to it. Yeah, we are aligned. So in this, let me, let me just do this. I'm going to type the word perspire, right? So if I want to turn this into a box design, the P has to be aligned with the T and the E has to be aligned with the U, right? So naturally, I want to increase the font size here for the, for the word perspire. I want to increase the font size so that it will be aligned. So in this case, I'm going to try maybe point size 80. Is that big enough? No, that is not big enough yet. So let's go again. So maybe we can type 83 and see how that works all right that seems to be almost perfect or maybe let's go a little bit more to 85 there you go lovely so you can see now that it's taking shape the p and the t is coming to alignment and the u and the e is getting aligned as well yeah so that's and remember a good design when you're creating a header like this right? Don't leave too much space. Don't leave too much space in between the two lines. Click on your second text box and push it upwards. Reduce the lines like that. Yeah. So it will look like it's one block of, of sentence instead of being separated. Okay. So then let's do the third line now, right? The greater U, right? So let's put that. Let's achieve some alignment first, uh, maybe here. The greater U. Now you can see that it's a bit longer. So we have to reduce the font size now. So maybe we'll use something like um, font size 50, right? To see whether that works. Okay, it's a little bit out. So let's bring it in a little bit more, maybe to 48, right? Okay, great. So we're seeing an alignment coming coming in place already. And let's take the word perspire. Let's copy and paste it, create a fourth, um, a fourth text box to put it at the end. This time we write the word inspire. So again, it's too small. So if you want to achieve alignment, of course we know what to do now, which is to also increase the font to maybe size 105 maybe. Okay, almost there. Maybe 106. Right, 
Okay. All right. A little bit more. 108. Awesome. All right. So again, make sure each and every row, you know, the gap between each row is, you know, not wide. It's very compact. And suddenly you're starting to create a nice typography design compared to the traditional way of using a single line or maybe, you know, two lines like that you are now creating elements of design like this, right? Now, another thing that um, some of you may not know is that, you know, I'll give you um, one of the key problems is that maybe in the future, you want to use a font that is not available in PowerPoint, that not everybody has. Maybe you have downloaded some really nice designer font from Google or something like that, you know? But the problem with using designer fonts is that if you were to send it to another person's computer or another person's Mac or Windows, you know, they will see a different font instead of the one that you've designed because you're using a font that only you have. So if you send it to people, they might not see it. So here what, here's what you can do, right? Um, you can actually select all the four different text boxes that you did earlier, right? Okay. Now you can copy it, right? And when you want to paste it, you can actually right click first. Don't just control V, yeah? Right click first and under the paste options, choose the second icon here, yeah? the second clipboard, because that allows you to paste your text as a picture. So now your set of um, these four uh, rows of text is now an image. So you can shrink it, you can grow it, is a lot easier. Um, grouping elements doesn't help, uh, Safi, because even if you group and you send it to people, it will still look messy. Because, for instance, if you're doing it in a Roboto font, the moment somebody sees it in Calibri or Arial, the size, the point size 20 for Roboto and point size 20 for Arial is not the same. So the Arial one might, might not be in a perfect box like the one you see in Roboto. Yeah, so grouping will help to actually not make it go, um, you know, not make it run on your computer, but it will not help when, it, when you send it across to others. Yeah, but the moment you paste it as an image, then it will, def people will definitely see the choice of font that you use and think of that without them even having, having that actual font. Yeah, and uh, one of the real beauty of um, uh, pasting it as an image is that you can start resizing and, and, and shrinking and growing it like how you would with a, with a JPEG or a picture. Yeah. So that's one tip guys. And, and one more, one more thing that I want to share with you. That's not the end of it. Yeah. Coming up with a nice header like this. Yeah. That's a, that's a good start, but I'm going to show you more. Now, some of you may want to put it, put some visuals with it. Right. So imagine doing this. Um, you have a picture of a of fire, right? Most people will probably just put it in a background or things like that. Or if they want to highlight just one word, they will just probably put behind the word inspire. You know, these are the things that non-designers will do most of the time, right? Right, like that. But um, let me give you another tip, guys. Imagine if that I can take this uh, picture here and put it into my text, yeah? Instead of behind the text or above the text, it actually goes into my text. So how do we do that? Because it's gonna give a really, really nice effect. I'll give you an example. If you wanna put a picture into your text, just highlight that particular word, right? Right click on it, go to format shape, right? Go to format shape, and it will open this panel on the right-hand side here, right? And you will see here, by default, it will be under shape options. You see that? It's now under shape options. We have to move across to text options because this is what we're going to do. We're going to play around with the text, not the shape, right? So the moment we go to text options, you will see down here that there's a text field. So you select that text field and you select picture or texture field right here, right? Because that's what we're going to, we're going to do. We're going to fill it up with a picture. So we select picture or texture fill. Let's insert that picture, that, that fire picture right just now, right? 
And where is it? Okay, this is the fire image. The moment I select it and I click insert, you will see that my inspire word, you know, the, the, the color of my text is actually the image of that fire, right? So this is one of those cool things that you can do for your headers, right? Instead of just having a flat color or, you know, your traditional yellows and greens and all that, you can actually create um, or insert images into your text. Or what if you want to do this? You know, what if you imagine creating a set of colors like uh, you have boxes like this, you want to create a specific set of color schemes to put into your text. So you have, for instance, a red, and then you create another box and you put the Olympic uh, green maybe. Yeah, all right. And then you put another Olympic color, which is probably the blue, for example, right. You can select all these three boxes together, right? And right click, and you can actually save it as a picture. Yeah, Save it as a picture, put it somewhere, anywhere on your desktop or, or wherever you want to put it. Call it the three Olympic colors or whatever you want to call it, right? Okay, let's delete that because your combination of the three boxes has now become an image on your desktop. So you can actually put that into your text. Again, go to text options, go to picture or texture field and insert that picture and insert that picture that you just created, right? So you have just created a picture of that um, Olympic colors, right? There you go, right? And you've got those kind of designs and things like that. Or oh, this is another, another, another um, image. Let me use the one that um, I just created just now. Let's insert. Where was it? Um, Olympic colors, three Olympic colors. This is the one. So the moment I insert, you see it there. The red, the green, and the blue, right? So this is what you can do with uh, to highlight certain words in your header or and things like that. Insert visuals or pictures or even a set of colors that you actually save as an image on your desktop, right? And if that's cool already and that's all you need, let me give you another tip. What if this is where you can start actually start getting creative. So Perspire is, of course, sweat. So I went to Google and searched for a picture of a drop of sweat, right? So I can actually do this. Um, I'm going to select the, the greater you inspire, these two last lines here. I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to paste it as a picture, right? So I'm going to put it aside for a while. And this picture of a sweat here, I'm going to connect it with the T, with a P here, sorry, the P for perspire. And I'm going to connect it and make it look as though the, the sweat comes from the letter P itself, right? And because the word, the greater you inspire here has already been flattened as a text, I'm going to rearrange it now to recreate that box again, like that, for example, right? So now you can start playing around and have a combination between, you know, uh, text as well as visuals or little bits of uh, designs that you include into your header, right? There's so many ways that you can play around with this. So do try it uh, at your own time. Or in fact, in a while, I'm going to give you an opportunity to try this out, okay? Because it's in one of the exercise documents that you've downloaded earlier. All right. Now, um, now that you know that you can actually paste your text as a picture, right? You can right click and then select the second clipboard that allows you to paste it as an image. Now, imagine doing this. This is the next level of PowerPoint, guys. This is where we manipulate PowerPoint functions. Okay. Um, I have created four different text boxes. I did typography today. I love it. This used to be four different text boxes. Ah, okay, sure thing. No worries. Let me go back to the top and I'm going to copy the link. The link is right here. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to put it in the chat window now for those who arrived a little late. There you go. The link's in the chat window. So yeah, um, you can start downloading now. All right. Okay, so where was I? All right. So 
initially, this was four different text boxes, but I have converted them into four different pictures. Yeah, remember how can we can paste it as a picture? So I did, it's now a picture. Typography is a picture. Today is a picture and I love it is a picture. All right. Okay, now, because they are already in picture form, right? I can now go to shape effects right here. At the top here, you see the shape effects, right? And I can actually give it some 3D rotation. You see the, the bottom uh, option here is a 3D rotation. I'm going to give it a few parallel angles. You see there are some a, a couple of angles that I can choose from here. So for the word I did, I'm going to give it this angle like that, right? The word typography, I'm going to go to do the same thing. 3D rotation, lie it down like that. The word today, go to shape effects, 3D rotation, make it face this way maybe. And the word, I love it. Let's follow the, the rotation of today, right? Like that. So now see what happens when I put them together. I'm just going to arrange it very, very quickly. And because I've created all these parallel angles, I can now start creating really, really design-driven shapes with my text. There you go. And suddenly it starts to look like a chocolate bar, something that you can just arrange and make your header look really, really cool, right? And once you're done, just highlight all of it, right? All the, the four text boxes or the four pictures, copy it and paste it as a brand new picture so that this is now a nice visual that you just created out of PowerPoint, right? So that's the difference in terms of how I use PowerPoint or how I look at PowerPoint differently from the rest of the world, right? So the moment I see opportunities that I can paste, um, you know, my text as a picture, I'm going to use all the image editing tools, you know, that were not meant for text so that I can create designs like this. So I'm going to give you guys 10 minutes to try this out, all right? So open the exercise document. Right. Once you're done downloading, open it. Um, the first exercise is basically, let me open that now. Um, where is it? Okay. If you open your exercise set one, the first exercise is called headline topography. So I've separated the four text boxes for you. The more you, and then perspire, and then the greater you, and then inspire. All you have to do is just play around with the, with the font size to make sure that you have you can achieve, you know, the um, the box look that I demonstrated earlier, right? Okay, and you can also try the option two, which is, you know, play around with the 3D rotation and the parallel angles, and rearrange the words I did typography today. I love it. Rearrange it to recreate that bar design that I have just demonstrated. All right. So I'm going to give you guys 15 minutes from seven. Let's take it as seven. 55 uh, as uh, 55 to um, my time 8 10 so 15 minutes from now yeah so um, if you have any questions just drop it in the chat window while you're testing it out but I would love to see some of you sharing your work on our chat window to see whether did you guys successfully managed to transform the, the content that I gave you into this kind of designs so go ahead and Enjoy yourself and let me know if you have any questions. Okay, go.
Oh, Steffi, you're you're telling me your your um ship effects are not clickable. Clickable. Okay, try to um, maybe because you have not pasted the link is blocked. Okay, that's probably from your um from your own. Uh, I think your your computer's uh, security settings that have been set by the administrators. It's actually open for anyone. Anybody else is uh, experiencing a block, or can you all? Can some of you actually download it? Does everyone have the same problem, or you know, is um, any of you managed to download the document? Oh dear. Okay, some people did manage. Okay, so yes. it's, I think it's more of the administrator yeah. setting that doesn't so, allow you to access. Yeah, if you can share your email for those who were not able to manage the download, if you can share your email with the ANOC uh, participant, we'll try to send by email. All right. Thanks, Gustavo. Thanks for helping Thank out. Thank you. Um, well, when it comes to Stefi, uh, your question, can you try to, did you paste your text as an Im image first? Can you try that? Because if it's on a text box, then uh, if it's in a text format, then of course the shape effects uh, some will some to some of you some of your versions will not be able to use it. But the moment you paste it as a picture, then when it's an image, then you can apply the shape effects. Maybe you might want to try that. Ah, yes, maybe. Out of curiosity, everybody, how many of you are on Windows and how many of you are on Mac? Can you just help me spell out PC and Win PC and Mac in the chat window? I just want to see the split between the two. Okay still very, very pre, uh, PC dominated. <laughs> Android going for PC now. <laughs> Great, go and grab it, come back. <laughs> awesome, all right, that's a good split. I'm saying, well, I think um, that's the rest. It's the same with the uh, industry percentage, I guess, between a 60, 40, 70, 30, yeah. Favoring PCs, all right, okay, great. Okay, anyway, try it out. Um, we still have a little bit of a slightly under 10 minutes to go. Yeah, let's see how many are able to achieve this design. Have fun.
Joe? Yes. Uh, Gustavo here. Uh, yes. How about uh, we can challenge uh, one of the participants to put their flag in the word inspire and share the result with us? Yeah, that would be awesome. That, that's a good idea, Gustavo. Maybe yeah. get go to Google, get a picture of your national flag, save it onto your desktop. And then when you want to insert, um, you know, try to insert that image of your flag inside the word inspire. Yeah. So how do you do that again? Come, let me, for those who want to see a, a quick repeat of that uh, exercise of how you actually put, uh, what do you call that? Put images into your text. Simply highlight the text that you want to put an image inside, right? Highlight it, right? And then all if, if the panel on the right here is closed, right? The moment you highlight it, just right click and the menu here will open go to format shape, right? And the panel will open and make sure you move over to text options. Don't select shape options, yeah? Go to text options, go to text field. If it's closed, just drop it down, open to text field, choose your picture or texture field, and then insert your, your, the image of your flag and you will see the shape of your, the, the image of your flag inside the word uh, inspire. Yeah, good idea, Gustavo. Let's try that out and let's see how many of you are able to do it. And let us know when we have a volunteer to share the results so we can also. Yeah, we'd love to see that. Wow, Sigo and Hadeep, nice. Well, instead of saying done, why don't have a quick screenshot and paste it in the chat and let's see, let's share it with the rest of the world. <laughs> oh man. Okay, that's all right. For those who can, just share away. Anyway, for those who, who are still a little bit lost or you know you're, that um, I could have been a little bit too fast and you think that you're going to miss out on all this, don't worry because as Gustavo said, you know, at, the, um, at the end of the day, everybody will have a link to download this entire, uh, the recording of this entire session so that you can play at your own speed. You can always pause and rewind and watch again how I click across all the, the menus and things like that, how things happen, yeah? And you can continue to slow down and repeat it and pause at your own time. So don't worry about missing out, yeah? Joe, as uh, Mohammed cannot share his, ah, oh, he said he can share now. Oh no, he can't. Uh, okay. Can you can he share his screen and we take the presentation down for a second just so he can show his uh, sure. his result? Yeah. Sure. Let me stop share for a while. There you go. Thank you, Mohammed. Floor is yours. Okay. Oh, nice! Hey, there you go. That's really really awesome. Great work. Khalil, um, yes, I can. The best version that you can use now is um, any, anything between 2013, 2016, or 2019, yeah? So those are the three versions that um, would be best, yeah? Between 2013, 2016, as long as you're not using 2010, yeah? So if you want to count the version number, because some of you may see numbers instead of years, so it's version... Uh, 15, 16, or 18, yeah? So anything lesser, you might have a few, um, uh, what do you call it? A few functions not available to you on the menu, but if you're using version 15, version 16, or version 18, that would be sufficient, yeah? Okay. All right, so let me go back to sharing my screen for the benefit of everyone, yeah? Now, for those who don't know how to check your PowerPoint versions, yeah? Um, let me just do a quick uh, guide on how to do that, okay? If you want to know what version of PowerPoint you're using, 
just go to file, right? At the very top here, the first step, go to file, and you will see at the very bottom here, you have your account, yeah? Click on the account, right? In, and then you will see this uh, button here, about PowerPoint. So the moment you click about PowerPoint, just look at the version here, yeah? Uh, you have your, your, year, your year, which is what you're looking at. Mine here is 2019, yeah? The first two numbers in this set of numbers here is your version. As you can see here, mine is 16. Yeah? The first two numbers before the dot, right? So you can see the year here and the version number is the first two numbers before the first dot, built 16.0. So that's your version. So actually, that's a good, uh, this is a good opportunity for me to ask everybody here today. If you check your account and about PowerPoint, you see your year or you see your version number, can I know now what versions are most of you using? Seagull is using 16. Yep, great. Ah, okay. Wow. It seems that uh, the Olympic committees from all over the world are using 2016. That's a standard. Well, in fact, you, you guys are consistent with the rest of the world anyway. Yeah, because most uh, corporate entities out there today have not actually moved to 2019, right? Um, but yeah, 2016 is more than su sufficient. And if you've been trying the functions out, you will know that. Yeah, that you, whatever that I've shared earlier, you have the same function. Right, great. Wow, Joyce, well done. Well done to the people who actually set up Joyce's laptop and <laughs> giving her 2019. Wonderful. Muhammad as well, good job. All right, nice. Okay, um, there's, uh, we've got about two more minutes for you guys to share your craft with the rest of the world. Anybody who just wanna save your screenshots in, onto, onto your desktop or probably share Share that image into the chat window. Would lit, would awesome to see it, right? Okay, great. Two more minutes. Oh, uh, Stapy, I'm not sure how that happened. Uh, Gustavo, are you there? Yes. Yes. Uh, Stephy, would you like to share your um, your screen with us so that I can see the issue that you're going through? Hang on, let me stop my share for a while. Uh, Stephy, if you can kindly share um, your PowerPoint screen with me so that I can see what what the problem is. Yeah. Okay. Hmm, that's weird. <laughs> oh, we can't, Sapi. Oh, right. There must be some, some settings. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when, okay. Uh, Sapi, if you want to move all the pictures together, right? If you want to move it together, come. Let me share with. Let me go back to sharing my screen. Um, hang on. Okay, uh, let's stop sharing that screen. Okay, the moment you want, if you want to move all of it, right? Let me share my screen now. Uh, share sound. Okay, got it. Share. All right. So, if you want to move all the the text together, right? So let me share with you. So the problem is the moment you select all, right? And then you try to move one, it keeps going selecting one only. So what you need to do is if you want to move all, 
select, go further away from your text, make sure that you select all four text boxes. And when you want to move it, right, move your mouse or your cursor to the, to the very edge, yeah, to the, to the border of one of the, one of the text boxes. Yeah? Don't, don't try to move it from the middle. Go to the corners. Yeah? Go to the line where the lines are and put your mouse there. And then you click and move. Then it starts to move as one set. But the moment if you have selected all four and then you try to move, then you, you are going back to selecting one. Yeah? So try to, do, to select all. Then move your mouse over to the border. Click and hold on to it so that you can move the whole set. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, guys. Um, well, maybe uh, Gustavo. I think some of some of us here today are rather shy, and and also because they can't they can't share um, due to some maybe some administrative settings or whatnot. But if you can email your attempts, that would be a nice poster, uh, a post post session poster that. Um, we can do a collage on. Maybe you can send all those, uh, email all those pictures to me so that I myself will create a collage just for you guys. I think that would be great. Right? Yeah, Andreas already posted the, the Arnold email so we can receive it and we can pass, nice. pass it on with you. Nice. Okay, guys, um, time's up. So hopefully that was one of the, um, you know, uh, a new technique that you learned today, yeah, in terms of, how to create a nice headline for your visuals, right? Is this is one of those ways where you can arrange your text so that the arrangement that you 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 create, yeah, the way you arrange your text, the first row, the second row, and whatnot, becomes a form of design on its own, right? So that's one tip. Great. So let's move on to the next one. You see, when we're when we're having fun, time flies really really fast. Well, we're already more over an hour into it, right? Okay, great. So let's move to the next subject. And the next subject, as I said earlier, I want to talk a little bit about colors, right? Because uh, I, colors play an important role when it comes to a design. But the, here's the biggest problem with PowerPoint when it comes to colors is because, I'll give you an example. When you create, when you want to create a set of data like this, right? And share it, um, you know, as a visual, right? The moment you put it together, you've done your circles, you've put in your data, you've put in a couple of pictures. You know what? The why, and then you take a step back and say, you know, why is it still ugly? Why is it still not cool? Why is it still not nice, right? Is it the choice of shapes? Is it the choice of uh, pictures that I put in? Ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you that the key issue here are the colors. And why is it the colors? Because these colors are PowerPoint colors. You know, PowerPoint colors are naturally not attractive. You know, it's so predictable that when people look at your design and they see this set of colors, they can tell straight away that it was done on a PowerPoint, right? With that mustard yellow and that baby blue and that light gray, it's just something that's readily available on PowerPoint. So. If you want to have some really, really nice colors that is not immediately available on PowerPoint, let me give you an idea on how you can transform your shapes and the color schemes into something that, you know, that can be done. Uh, people will think that it was done out of Photoshop or Illustrators, right? Let me share a nice cool technique for those who don't know, right? Now, a good color scheme. Let me, give, let me go to Google because um, remember this. Uh, guys, because the keyword that you should look for is this word, pastel tones. All right, search for pastel tones because pastel tones are very nice, warm, soft colors. Yeah, they're matte and not glossy in nature. It's a matte tone. It's very warm. It's very soft, and they would look good on screen. Yeah, so <laughs> and. Um, so the moment you search for pastel tones, these are colors that you can actually, uh, that will look good when you're putting it into your designs. And anybody that has, that doesn't have any color coordination skills, you don't know what colors go, go well with what, you know, this will be a great help to you guys because the references that you see here, they have actually combined all the matching colors that you need, right? I'll give an example of what you can do with it. 
Yeah. Let's look at this one. Yeah, because I think I can use this because it's got a set of three colors already. You see here the reddish, the greenish, and um, a choice of uh, earthy colors as earth colors as well. So I'm going to copy this, guys. I'm going to copy image, right click, copy on the image. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it, right? I'm going to paste that picture and I'm going to shrink it a little bit and put it at the side for a while. Now, what am I going to do with this, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the circle, right? This is the first color that I want to change and I want to change it to this red color scheme here, right? So I'm going to click on the circle. I'm going to go to shape fill up here, right? Shape fill. When I drop it down, that is one function. For those who have never used this function, it, you will start using it all the time after this. This function is known as the eyedropper, right? When you select the eyedropper function, right? Your mouse will automatically convert into an eyedropping tool. So all you have to do is bring your mouse onto that picture that you just pasted, right? Like that and click. That ugly mustard PowerPoint, mustard yellow PowerPoint color has changed to a nice pastel tone. So for your other inner circles, you can start doing the same thing. Shape fill, go to eyedropper and select that darker purple. And for this green, go to shape fill, go to eyedropper, choose another color, maybe like um, this color scheme here. And guys, these colors are not readily available on PowerPoint, you know? So it starts to make your designs look nicer. Right, I can guarantee it. The moment you complete the entire set, yeah, all these elements that you put in, and you're using colors that are not available on PowerPoint, but they, the source of these colors come from Google itself, from images that you can paste into your PowerPoint, and then you use your eyedropper function to fill it with those colors. That's when it starts to look more professional and not so, how do I say it? PowerPoint-ish, right? Because a lot of people think PowerPoint is not a good tool for designs. This is where you break that belief, right? By using that eyedropper tool for your colors, all right? So remember that. Now, the next tip that I want to share, all right, is a placeholder design. So for those who don't know what a placeholder is, I'm sure everybody knows what infographics are, right? So if you want to do some sort of an infographic visual for your social media postings, right? Um, you might want to come up with really, really nice placeholders. So what are placeholders? Placeholders literally mean a place to hold your content. Like for example, if you look at examples of infographics here, each arrow here, the green arrow, the yellow arrow, the pop, these are all known as placeholders. Every circle here is a placeholder. Every bar here that you see down here is a placeholder. So a placeholder is all these shapes that you use to hold your content. And PowerPoint can create really, really nice infographics as well. You just have to know how to take advantage of all the shapes that PowerPoint have given you. Okay. For example, I'm going to create the most basic placeholder design. That you can that is the most common design that you see in in uh in the visual world out there right and you can actually use powerpoint and the the only shapes that i'm going to use are these two circles and the and these two rectangles which has a slight curve at the edges right now speaking of the curved rectangles here i'm sure a lot of you yeah probably half of the people in the room today half of you have never realized that there is a yellow dot right here. Yeah. So for those who have actually never touched this yellow dot before, it is for you to click on it. You can click on it and hold on to it, and you can stretch it to make, make it even more curvy. That's what that yellow dot is for. So for those who have never played around with it, try to play around with this. So from uh, just a typical curved edge, you can actually transform your entire box to look like a, a pill, like that, right? So not all shapes do have the yellow dot, but any of these shapes that has a yellow dot do customize the, the, 
the curves and all that to make it look more interesting or to your liking, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is this. I'm going to eye drop a couple of, um, uh, what do you call that? Olympic colors, I'm gonna put the red. And, and then for this circle, I'm gonna make it slightly smaller than the red circle. I'm gonna put it on top. Maybe I'm gonna change it to um, maybe a black, yeah? Or a dark gray, maybe. And then for this um, curved rectangle here, I'm gonna change it to a, a green. I'm gonna eye drop the green here, right? And I'm gonna slot it in like that. Make it bigger, slot it in like that. Now I'm gonna bring this gray circle to the front again. So I'm gonna right click, bring to front so that it comes up in front of that green uh, rectangle, right? And same thing here, I'm gonna curve it a little bit more. I'm gonna make it bigger, right? And I'm gonna send this to the back. So right click, send to back, so that it becomes the backmost layer. And I'm going to move it in there. Let me change the colors first. I'm gonna go and change it to a yellow, for example, right? And I can slot this in. And there you have it. You are actually creating a really, really nice, a simple infographic placeholder. And what can you do with this? This is where you can actually, you know, for where this rectangle is, you can actually start putting your content in there. Yeah. Or whatever tags or descriptions that you want to put in. And this big circle here, you can actually put whether you want it, you want to put icons in there, or you can even put like a, any sort of numberings maybe, right? For maybe number four, let's change it to a nicer looking font. Maybe put a font size like 100 or something, make it really, really big. So that when you put it in, it's gonna look really cool, right? So look at all the shapes that you have in PowerPoint. There's tons of shapes there, but you know, the moment you start combining them, this will become really, really nice placeholders for you to arrange your content and create a more uh, graphical looking design. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> That's cool, right? Okay, so now you're starting slowly but surely, you're starting to see PowerPoint a little bit differently now, because I'm using PowerPoint as a design tool, not to create documents. Yeah, it's just to come up with design elements. Yeah, And this is one of those things that you can do with the shapes that PowerPoint has given you. All right, great. All right. Okay, let's move to the next step, guys. The next step is going to be very, very useful and very important, in fact, to a lot of you here today. Because most of you, when you are going to create your social media posts, most likely you're going to use images. And I know um, ANOC, ANOC has a very large um, library, image library that you can use to create all your communication materials, all right? So I'm gonna show you how you can do some really, really cool image editing uh, stuff, yeah, and, and tricks using PowerPoint. Now, I'm gonna start off with the most useful one. It start off like this. I mean, imagine you have a picture like this, like the, 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 the what do you call that? Figure, skate, figure skater on the left-hand side, right? You have this nice picture, um, most of you, because you're not designers and all that, you'll probably just use this empty space here to put your tags or whatever communications or your logos and things like that, right? But what if you have a nice background design like the one on the right? You have a nice organic colors and things like that, and you want to put that guy there, right? That would require you to, you know, a lot of people will think, oh, I need to use Photoshop or Illustrator to do this right? Let me tell you that you don't have to, because here's another tip, guys, is that this is where we start using PowerPoint to superimpose two or more visuals to create one, okay? Um, here's what I'm going to do. For this picture, right, the moment you double click, if you click twice on an image, right, uh, your menu will change into a picture format tab. Right, you see that it's under picture format. So the very first function on the left is a remove background function. So the moment you click that, right, PowerPoint will try to remove 
um, what they think would be your background, right? But of course, they will tend to leave something out. PowerPoint will tend to leave something out. Like if you look at here, you see like um, the boots, the, 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 the shoe is missing, right? PowerPoint forgot to add that in. The area in purple is what PowerPoint thinks you want to remove. And the colored one is what they are, you are going to keep. So if you want to select the shoe because it's missing now, just go back up. If you look at the top here, it says mark areas to keep, right? Let's select that and just do a quick tap or draw across so that PowerPoint will detect, ah, okay, you want that shoe in as well, right? And if you look here, you see that there's a white, there's a white colored space there. You know, it's not a color. That's, this is supposed to be empty, right? So you can switch to mark areas to remove and just do a small click on it to make sure that PowerPoint removes that, right? So the moment you've selected what you want to keep, you've, you've unselected or you selected the things you want to remove, the moment you're done, you can go to keep changes. Go to keep changes and you click that and your background magically disappears. So this is where you can start putting in whatever images that you want into a, a different background that you want to put in, right? And just, you know, you can always crop the picture of the figure skater or something like that, you know, to, so that it fits into your design and things like that. Crop it. And now what do you do? You select both your background and the image that you put inside. You can always copy it and start making a brand new picture, right? So these are things that, you know, a lot of us never realized that we can do on PowerPoint, right? So, and we've been using PowerPoint all our lives. Yeah. So now that you know, um, you have a remove background function, please make full use of it. Combine it with the large inventory of um, pictures that uh, Anok provides you, and you can start customizing it to your countries, right? So this is what PowerPoint is all about. Not just about documents, it's more on design. So another function. So let's do another one, for example, right? Um, so in this case, I've got a picture here, right? So again, I'm going to remove background, right? So this becomes a little bit challenging because the contrast is not so high. So PowerPoint is a little bit confused now, right? Which areas do I want to keep? Which areas do I want to remove? It requires a little bit more work. So I'm going to go to mark areas to keep. Let's keep her feet first, right? Yep, her feet's missing. Part of a, a, a tire is missing. Okay, everything is, and the palms here, got it. But they got, got a picture of the sea at the back. So let's switch over. Let's remove them, remove it. Let's remove all these other parts as well. So it takes a little bit of patience. Yeah, to, to fight with PowerPoint to make sure that, you know, um, they keep the right things and remove the right things and things like that. But the moment you've managed to do it, right, then that's when it starts to come out really, really good. So keep changes. Let's put that in, right? Now you can easily put it into whatever background that you want to put. Let's crop that, yeah, and make sure it fits into your background, into your plain background. Let's crop it. And now let's go back to our typography just now, what we did. I'm gonna take this, right? I'm gonna copy it. And I'm gonna go back to that image just now and paste it as a picture so that now, oh, oh my God, I missed out the top one. Okay, let's go back to that um, typography just now, All right? Uh, let's delete this. I'm gonna select all of this, right? Control C, I'm gonna copy, go to that uh, athlete just now, paste it as a picture, and you now have your first poster, right? You can save this, right? Cut it or copy it, paste it as a brand new picture, and you have just created a visual for your social media, yeah? Portable network graphics, yes. Um, uh, Puraha? You can, because the moment you've done this, you've pasted, you combine them all, you can actually right click, right click on the, on the combination. You can save as picture and 
by default, yeah, um, by default, it will be set, save as type here, it will be in portable network graphics. It will be in PNG format, yeah? So it's a little bit more sharper, it's a bit more high res. So I hope that helps you, uh, Furaha, yeah? Okay, great. So yes, you can save your combination of image, uh, your, your collage into a PNG file. If you want, you can save it as JPEG as well, all right? So this is where um, you get to try it again. Yeah, guys. So um, open back the same document just now, the exercise document. Yeah, because I have the image editing, um, the pictures that I'm, I provided you. Try to play around with that remove background and see whether you're able to make it come together, right? Put it together. Let's see how skillful or how good your, your mouse is in terms of you know, removing the backgrounds carefully and whatnot. So remember, if you want to remove the background, just double click on the picture. Automatically, PowerPoint will go into a picture format menu. And on the very first uh, tool here on the left is that remove background. So try it out and put the figure skater into this nice, lovely um, organic design and see whether you're able to do it. And for the second one, you can insert your newly created typography headline, you know, and see whether it works. All right. So let's take um, 10 minutes to do this. Yeah. Let's take 10 minutes to do this. Uh, in fact, if any of you want to access a larger pool of uh, images, you can always uh, download. Gustavo, I can share this with them, right? The link to, to, to all the images. Uh, we can put here on the link the, the link for Flickr. Okay. Okay, but, great. Uh, as you said, for the future, we're going to have a library of images that the NSCs will be able to use. Okay. So but I'm for now, put... uh, we can we can share the Flickr now. Okay. Uh, so you're 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 gonna paste it on the chat, yeah? Yeah, I'll ask Andres to paste that on All right, the chat. Cool. Uh, Thanks. For the time, what do you say? We give them seven minutes, and then for the last three, we can ask them to share the results. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So let's try. Let's see if you can do at least one in seven minutes, and let's have the final three minutes to see a collection of your efforts and your attempts in the chat window. So go and try it out. If, uh, if you're finished, just put your name on the chat and we can call you out to share your screen. Awesome. <laughs> yes, you're right. It's a fight with mouse and image. You're literally arguing with PowerPoint. No, I want to keep that. No, you're deleting the wrong thing. <laughs> so yes, it's a bit of a challenge, but the outcome is extremely rewarding if you get it right, yeah? Uh, so go, and ho hopefully we can see some really, really cool attempts. All right, have fun. I think Concho is already done and Velika as well. That is ridiculously fast, Velika and uh, Puncho. Do share it with us. In the, can you share it in the chat window? Yeah. Or do you the chat want window, uh, I think they don't have any title. They can't, they can't have access, yeah? So, yeah, okay, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna stop my share so while everybody else is trying. Um, Gustavo, I will leave it for you to actually, yeah. yeah Good. Um, so we can ask Puncho uh, to share first Honestly. and then we can see Velika's. Awesome. Go ahead, thank you. Ah, nice one. That's good. That's good. That's really well done. Uh, Fancho, I think that was Siegel. Can uh, Fancho go ahead and share? Or Velika? Perfect. Oh, nice. Perfectly done. Great. So you can try from now on, Velika. You can probably just try to put some text, you know, to describe it or, or, you know, the typography exercise that you did earlier. Find a place to actually slot it, maybe next to his leg. You know, it will come up with a really, really cool design. Yeah. Nice. Oh, so just I love the flag it. with the waves and with the wind. Eh? That's very nice. Yeah, one. like that. That's a really cool touch.
So Andreas did a collage of uh, the work that uh, the participants did on the first exercise. So you can take a look on the results. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, you're, you're sharing all your past efforts and not just the recent one. I think take that opportunity the moment you share screen to show all the stuff. Oh, that's really, really cool. Love the, the effect of the flag and all that. Nice. Oh, wow. Oh, well done. That's nice, Jessica. Whoa, you know, it's, it's this kind of, um, you know, it's this kind of showcase that uh, what I'm seeing now that keeps me, you know, uh, inspired to continue with, you know, producing this kind of uh, sessions for people because the result that I see immediately, you know, um, you know, it is different. Yeah. So immediately, whatever that I share with you guys, the moment you, you see it, you, you apply it, you know, you instantly upskill yourselves, right? You instantly upskill yourselves to a level that you thought you couldn't do with PowerPoint, right? So it's actually relatively simple. It's very straightforward. And all that was required was for me to hold your hand for 15 to 20 minutes each time. And man, you now have a whole... It's almost like you have a new tool in your laptop, right? Nice, guys. Extremely proud and, and happy to see the results. Great. Okay, guys, let's take another um, three minutes. So I think it's a great time for you to share uh, the rest of your works as well, if you can. So three more minutes and we'll move on to the next subject. All right. So let me uh, share my screen now. Or Gustavo, is there any more screens that you're going to share? Uh, no, I think we can go ahead. Okay, cool. All right. So I'm going to share mine. Um, let's go share. And okay. So three more minutes and we'll move to the next subject. For, for the sake of time, I think that uh, if you want to uh, run to the seconds. Yeah, I think oh, so. Oh, great. Even yeah. better. So can we get a general consensus with, for, from everyone? Are we okay to go ahead? Just say yes or okay in the chat window. Want to move to the next tip? All right, cool. Yeah. Okay, guys, let's move. <laughs> Everybody has said, um, the majority has spoken. All right, let's move. Um, now, we've come to the final tip, yeah, um, that because if you look at the time, we're almost two hours up already, right? Which is just in time for me to share um, one of the tools on PowerPoint that a lot of people don't seem to know can be done, right? Which is, can you actually make a video using PowerPoint? Well, you already, do, you already know now that you can because I just showed you my training video, you know, uh, earlier when we just started just now. But now I'm going to show you how it's done, right? Now, it is actually a, a quite a complicated procedure, yeah, which requires a little bit of um, uh, what do you call it? Explanation and detailed uh, hand guiding, uh, hand holding. I have to hold your hand a little bit, but um, I'm going to give you the principle of how it's done, and then perhaps in the future, you know, we can arrange another session which is just focused on video making alone. But for now, I think even with the tips that I'm sharing with you now, today itself, you'll be able to take it with you and explore the functions on your own, at your own pace, at your own time, right after this class as well. Okay, so um, the concept of making a video using PowerPoint is basically, you have a set of slides, right? For example, you know, you have a storyline, you have a storyboard, you have the messaging that you want to put into your video and you separate them into different slides. So you have slide one, jump higher, slide two, run faster, slide three, play better, slide four, throw further. You, you know how this works. Just prepare your script, yeah? prepare your storyline, put them into all the different slides and start animating them. Of course, I'm sure some of you may be familiar with the, how do you animate your content? 
uh, the rest, you may have to join my other classes, perhaps, you know, in terms of how to do your animation and how to do your slide transitions, you know, the way your slide flips from one slide to another and all these kind of techniques. But I'm sure um, most of you, right? Ah, I will show you that, Puraha. How can I embed audio to slides and things like that? So I will show that to you in a while if you want to embed an audio. But first things first, um, the moment you've prepared all your content and you've done all the animation for it, maybe the word jump higher will start fading in. Maybe the picture of the high jumper will, you know, will flip or things like that. You create your effects. And then what you do next is you embed an audio. Now, how do you embed an audio? I'm going to share with you how do you insert an audio file, all right? So you, if you go to your menu up here, you go to insert, right? There's an insert tab there. And under the insert, the men in the insert tab, on the, on the right-hand side, you will see that audio there, right? So you can actually, when you drop it down, you have two options. You have an existing audio file, which is a music file or an MP3 or a soundtrack, right? Or you can actually record your own voice. The moment you record audio, it will switch on your microphone so you can narrate, you do your narration. Right? You can speak and, and things like that and put your voice into the video, right? So just insert audio and select the file and it will appear into your slide, yeah? Into your presentation, okay? So great. So that's how you insert your audio. Now, um, the moment you've inserted your audio, right? The moment you insert your audio, that's when you will start recording you can actually record the the timing that you set for each slide you know that means you're gonna you're gonna click once wait for two seconds and then click again wait for another three seconds and then you change to the next slide you click again to reveal the words run faster and then you click again to reveal the running the running uh, athlete and then you wait for another three seconds then only you move to the third slide that's basically you know, and you can actually record the duration that you take to move from one animation to another. Yeah? And how do you do that? How do you record? The moment you've do, you created all the animations and you want to record your, your presentation, your, your movements, you go to, uh, let me try to move this thing here. Okay, you go to slideshow. There's a slideshow tab there. Slideshow. And then you're going to record yeah, you record from the beginning. But I will do a demonstration in a while. I have a separate document that I will for me to do the demonstration. Yeah. And the moment you've recorded all these movements that I was telling you about, the moment you're done with the recording and the timing, um, the, the movements of your animation is in line with the tempo and the feel of the music, right? So the moment is all. Uh, you know, in tune and the movements complement the, the tempo of the music, then you can actually convert your PowerPoint document into a video format. Yeah. Yes, James, do you have a question? Okay, while James um, prepares himself, let me just give a quick demonstration on how we uh, record a PowerPoint uh, movement, yeah? So let me just escape this for a while. I'm going to go to a next document. I'm going to close this, right? And the next document is this one. Okay, you will, you, you will have time to play around with this. Now, what you're seeing here is just a set of slides, okay? How to embed the audio, okay. Uh, how do you embed the audio uh, is that you go to insert, right? Go to insert the menu up here. And on the right hand side here, you have that audio uh, function. Just drop it down. Just click on audio on my PC. Yeah. If you have a music file, you can always if you have a music file in your computer, just click on that. And the moment you see a, a, a speaker icon with a play button here, and let's try playing it. There you go. Then you know that you have embedded your audio into your PowerPoint, all right? So again, just go to insert, select audio, and select audio on my PC. Now, coming back to this document. So what I've done is this. Um, 
you can see I've inserted a music file here. The music file here is, it sounds very dramatic. Let me just play it for you. It sounds, it's a really like your, it's like your movie trailer kind of uh, sound effect. Let me just play for a while for you to get, get the feel of it. Very dramatic, right? Yeah, so it's so much drama, it's so intense. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do something really simple. My first slide has the words, it's time to, right? And where I put these three words, it's time to, I'm going to put it on all the other slides as well. You see, um, the words, it's time to there, is placed exactly uh, the same across all my other slides as well. The only thing that's different are the big single words here. So slide number two is rise. Slide number three is fight. Slide number four is defy. Slide number five is change and things like that. So what I'm going to do is, you know, with the tempo of the music earlier, I'm going to, with every time the, the, the music changes or, or blasts out, I'm going to be clicking on all these slides so that the feel of the movement of the slides complements that audio, that soundtrack just now that I just shared with you. Yeah. And, and you can see, right, the moment I go into like slide number seven, number eight, and number nine, I'm going to rotate between black background, white background, black background, white background, and so on and so forth. And I'm going to end it with a, with a, call, to mess, a call to action like it's time to make a difference. You know, I'm sure everybody else will, you all will have your own subjects that you can use this technique for, right? Now, I'm going to show you how I record this, okay? I can go to slideshow. I'm going to go to record. I'm going to record from beginning, right? And what you see on screen right now is your mini PowerPoint recording studio, so to speak, right? Just pay attention to the record button on the left-hand side, right? Um, there's a record button on the left-hand side here. So the moment you click on this, PowerPoint is going to give you a countdown, right? The moment it starts recording, you'll be moving this button here. This is to advance to the next slide or to move to the next animation and things like that. So that's all you have to do, right? So I'm going to record this and I'm going to be clicking based on the music. Yeah, you get me? I'm going to be clicking um, based on the impact of the music itself. So I'm going to start recording. Pay attention, right? Three, two, I'm going to move, Rhea. The moment is time to start. Okay, let's go. So that's me clicking. Yeah. So I'm creating that kind of feel, right? And the moment I'm done, if I think that I'm, I'm happy with that, with that timing and that movements, I'm just going to go back up here and close it. Close the door of my studio, come back to the front. And what, you, what I'm going to go, and if you want to test it out, if you want to test it, right? Just go down here into your slideshow mode. I'm sure everybody has a slideshow button up here when you want to full screen your presentation. Now, if you look at me, if you look at me in my webcam, my web camera here, the moment I go into slideshow, you can, you can see, I'm gonna put my hands right next to my face so that you can see that I'm not clicking anything, but PowerPoint is going to move on its own because why? I have already recorded the timing just now, right? So let's check this out. I'm gonna go full screen and you can look at that. I'm not clicking on anything, yeah? Let's go. that cool or what right because that timing has already been recorded it's in tune with the music that you set and it's gonna come out really really awesome and the moment you're done this you can save it 
it is still in PowerPoint format. It is still in PPTX. So if you want to convert it into a video, you just go to file, right? Okay, just go to file, all right? And then you go to save as, right? You see save as here, okay? Put it wherever you want to put it, maybe on your desktop. So the type of uh, save currently is under PowerPoint presentation. But if you drop it down, there's an option for you to switch it to MPEG-4 video. So the moment you select MPEG-4 video and you click save, you will see at the bottom here that PowerPoint is converting from a PPTX into a video.mp4. There you can see the, the progress bar there, right? So it's converting slowly into a video format, right? So in this case, it's gonna take a little bit more. Okay, now it's done. Now, if I was to shrink everything and go here, you can see now that this is already in video format. I'm gonna play it, right? Check this out. Oh man, can't hear the sound. Okay, let's play this again. Oh, stop, stop. Okay, let's go. So ladies and gentlemen, that is how you can start creating videos out of PowerPoint. The only thing that um, you need now is your content, your slides, and that's it. Put a nice music behind it, move those slides, record it, convert it into a video format, and it's done out of PowerPoint. Who would have thought, right? So now go back to the download document. Yeah, um, the second file is uh, the second file is the this particular one that you see on screen now. I want you guys to try this out, right? Try to record it, or before you even record, just try to go straight into slideshow mode and try to move it according to the music. Just get used to it first, and then you go to slideshow, go to record, and record from the beginning, right? Yeah, okay. So, guys. Puraha, how do you animate your text? Um, great question, right? When you want to animate, of course, this, uh, this is actually a whole subject on its own in terms of animation. Uh, if you want it to come in, like for instance, like rice here, if you want the word rice to come in, you go to animation, right? Choose any of the green areas here where you can select, you, you want it to wipe in, you want it to fade in and all that, right? And choose that um, any of those styles. Yeah, so that's basically how you animate. But for the rest of you who are already familiar with it, just open this document uh, that you downloaded earlier from WeTransfer and start playing around. Don't have to record yet. Try to familiarize yourself with just in, in slideshow mode first, in full screen mode first. Move your mouse uh, according to the tempo of the music. Yeah, it gets a lot faster towards the end. So you might want to practice first. And then when, you're, when you think you're ready, Go to slideshow, right? Go to slideshow and then select record from beginning and knock yourself out. <laughs> okay, guys, go and try it out and let's see what happens. So I'm going to give everyone now because we're reaching towards the end. So let's give this about Gustavo. Am, am I allowed to exceed a little bit by maybe five minutes? Everybody okay with that? Yes, I believe that it's okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. So go and try it out. So for those who had, have successfully moved your slides according to the music, do let us know that you, know, you were able to do it, right? Of course, the file is a bit too heavy for you to share it with everyone, but... Um, I'll take your word that you were able, I'll, I'll trust you when you say that, you know, you managed to get the timing right. So try it out. Ah, um, good question on where you get dramatic sounds, right? Uh, for those who want a good um, selection of sounds, you can always go to a few websites. One of the websites would be Audio Jungle. 
yeah audio jungle would be um, a great site to to look at um, very short snippets of uh, you know music so i'm going to put this websites into the chat window for you to use later so search for audio jungle that's the first website the second website is epidemic sounds right um, and the third website is of course youtube but when you search youtube when you're searching on youtube search for um background background music right yeah so those are the three most frequent places that i visit to get audio files all right cool uh, hey guys. One, one, one question for, yes. for when you're searching online for music so how do you work with uh copyrights and these things is something to be careful no? well it depends um because sometimes uh especially on youtube yeah guys for uh, there are a lot of these um we call them bedroom composers these are guys who just want to share their music out for free you can even download it and, and convert it they just want their their music to go out yeah with no royalties involved and things like that so just search for royalty free background music and there will be a few really really good um, bedroom composers use those yeah but of course if it's something that you're going to use officially and it's going to go out in the market you know and think that you may have to purchase the files yeah so of course nowadays you know buying this music files is actually very very cheap yeah they can range anywhere between 10 usd for online use as long as you don't go on uh, free to air television you don't put it on 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 the airwaves of radio and all that but if it's just for digital use for a span of two to three weeks it's actually very affordable so do try to search for those yeah um good question which one do i use most yeah I actually use Audio Jungle most. Audio Jungle is my favorite because they are filtering and how they separate the genres, you know, whether they want you want movie trailer style or you want thriller style, you want inspiring style, you want ukuleles, you want so they've got a, a very nice split of genres and categories that you can, you know, narrow down to. So yeah, my favorite will definitely be uh, Audio Jungle. Okay, good. Now, coming back to this uh, video making technique earlier, did any of you manage to successfully get your timing right? Let's see. Oh, you asked about fonts, not the website. All right. Um, what fonts do I use most? That's a great question. Let me open up. For those who are wondering about what fonts I use most, yeah, let me open up another document so that um, I'm going to go to one of my past trainings and I'm going to go get your camera phones ready guys so if you want to find, install some really really nice fonts yeah let me give you a screen and you can take a picture of the screen right so that you can uh, search for it later okay now Guys, switch on your camera phones. Take a picture of what you see now on your screen because these are a list of my personal favorite fonts when it comes to designing. Yeah, headers, headlines, and things like that. Yeah, um, you can tell I'm a very uh, sans serif person. I like very clean and thin, very minimalist style. Yeah, uh, you can use print screen PC as well if you want, right? Okay, and, and go to Google Fonts, yeah? Yeah, you were about to ask this as well. Awesome. All right. So glad I could share this with you. So you can print screen it, save it on whatever documents that you have on now, and start searching. Uh, where do you get this file? Go to Google Fonts. If you're in Google, if you search for uh, Google Fonts, right, you will arrive at a Google Fonts website, right, where you can download quite a number of these designer fonts for free, yeah? All right, so yeah, use those that list that I have just given you just now so that you can start downloading. Okay, no worries, Safi. Glad I could help. Yeah. Okay, cool. Hmm. Seems that quite a number of people have not. Uh, or do you have any point suggestions for Cyrillic? No, not 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 immediately though. But be careful, yeah, because um, Gustavo, do you have? an official uh, Olympic font that uh, 
they have to follow? No, no, no. He cannot see. It's free to use whatever they. Ah, great. Yeah. So feel free to use. Uh, by the way, guys, um, you know, in terms of font categories, allow me to actually share in terms of font categories. Yeah. Um, everybody knows your serif and your sans serif. Yeah. So these are the fonts categories that if you want to filter and search for specific fonts. So serif fonts, the the category of serif, are fonts where at the edges of the of each letter, it looks like it has all these spikes and strokes coming out. So any kind of fonts that has all these strokes and spikes coming out at the edges are known as a serif font. The sans serif, sans serif are fonts that are very clean. It doesn't have all those um, edges and 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 decorative uh, strokes at the edges. Yeah. So the ones that are very clean, very straightforward, those are sans serif. The script and display fonts are the ones that look like human handwriting. Yeah. So these are the ones like your Comic Sans, your Bradley Hand, and things like that. So, of course, if you want to show legacy or history, you know, and things like that, you go for serif because serif is more formal. But if you want to show modern, you want to show minimalist, you want to show very clean kind of designs, I would recommend using sans serif. Yeah. And if you want it to be a little bit more playful or more organic, then of course you go for your script and display fonts. So these are the things that I actually teach in my entire full module, which I think, um, you know, I think some of you in future, maybe if there's enough attendees from all over the world, I will probably organize one for you guys. Um, hopefully that will happen one day. All right. Poppins, yeah. Poppins is good too. I agree, Pura. All right. Okay. Um, We've come towards the end. So I want to give, uh, give everyone here a quick summary before we go into our Q&A. Yeah? So if I allow me to um, give a few five key advice to wrap up this entire session, right? Before we go into questions. The first advice is, I know the, 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 key, the key reason why most of you here are here today is because you want to create visual for your social postings. So, um, oh, did not see the fonts listed? All right, hang on. Let me go back to that. Sorry. You mean you did not see the, um, the robotos and all that? Yeah, uh, let me remind you that uh, this... Uh, okay, got it already. Okay, cool. This will be also, this session is recorded and we're going to make it available to all of the NFC. So yeah. if there's any sp a specific part that you want to, to revisit, we'll make it up available. Yes, exactly. Okay, great. So my first advice is when you're creating your designs or your messaging on your social media, um, make sure you skew your designs based on the platforms you intend to put it on. Because as you know, if you're doing an Instagram post, yeah, if you're Instagram, then it's a perfect one-to-one -one ratio, right? Or at the most, a four by three, yeah? Whereas you can be a little bit more uh, dynamic when you put it on Facebook, for example. And naturally, if you put it on Facebook, your visual itself should not have that much text. Yeah? Keep your text simple because you have more than ample room to put that in your post description, yeah? So, and the sizing of your canvas is very important as well. Yeah? So make sure you skew it. Do a little bit of research to find out what photo or image sizes are the most optimum for each of these individual platforms and start designing based on those sizes. Yeah? It's not a one size uh, fit all. Yeah? Don't use a 16 by nine standard PowerPoint template and apply it on Instagram and all that. It may not be as optimum. Right, so skew to your platforms. Number two, if you have a lot to say, yeah, try not to put it in one picture or one visual alone. Split it up, right? Less is more. It it try to be, uh, try to give a lot of breathing room to your visuals. Try not to cram it so much. The moment it is congested, that is there's a higher likelihood of people not being interested in, in consuming it or reading it because it's just too uh, cluttered. Yeah? So keep it clean, one image, a simple sentence, move to the next image, another set, and that's it. Yeah? Number three, consistency builds familiar, familiarity. I cannot stress on this enough. So 
if you're going for a certain set of colors, if it's for a specific campaign, try developing a familiar template to it. So that when the moment you start posting regularly, the people will see immediately that, you know, they recognize the brand, they recognize it's coming from you because the arrangements and the color schemes and all that, um, they've seen it before many, many times. So that builds familiarity, yeah, and that helps. Number four. So as I said, I'm sure a lot of us here are not from the design world. So please, by all means, get, um, you know, uh, do a little bit of research on the principles of design. Yeah, What makes a, a design great? And, and see all the case studies and the examples right, that are out there uh, in, the, in the online sphere and apply them, right? Experience is always the best teacher, yeah? So as much as you get garnered knowledge, try applying it, all right? And number five, last but not least, is of course, um, I love doing this. Every time when I think of putting something onto my design and all that, I don't just ask why, you know, why, do, why should I put this and all that? I normally ask, why not? Yeah? Is it wrong for me to put it there? Is, the night, is, is, it, is it against the grain? Is it unconventional? You know, will people understand it less or, you know, the most, creative the most creative people in the world, they don't ask why, they ask why not, you know? So if it's, if it's, you know, something that has not been done before, so if it's something that does not break any, you know, rules or whatever, go ahead, right? So with that, you know, I think I've, I've um, I hope I have given enough uh, ideas and guide and, and knowledge to you guys for this for the past two hours for you to get the ball rolling yeah of course the rest is entirely up to you to start practicing you know apply all the techniques that I've shared refer back to the videos that you're going to the recording of this session that you're going to receive apply it test it out and you know if there's an opportunity in the future we might meet again so with that Thank you. And I open the floor. Terima kasih is, of course, thank you in uh, Bahasa, our national language in Malaysia. So it's basically thank you. And I open the floor to questions. Anyone? Uh, we are, uh, of course, uh, if you want uh, to drop a question, please do. Uh, we are over the time. But first, yeah. I wanted to thank uh, Joe for the session. I think he was very nice. Uh, it gives us a uh, many interesting tips that uh, hopefully you. all of the uh, all of those uh, who managed to, to, to watch uh, can apply on their social media building and uh, achieve their objectives on the social media of their own uh, NOCs. Uh, if no questions come up, uh, first Mr. I want Abel, to remind uh, you. May I just interject just a little bit? Of course. Of I mean, because normally my, my after sales support is actually quite good. So if you have any questions that you, you forget to ask today, right? Uh, Gustavo, you can always uh, share my email address with them. Yeah. Um, so that uh, if they have any specific questions, you can always um, direct it to me. Perfect. Uh, so we, we do ask you to please fill out the feedback form that uh, Andres has put here on the chat. Uh, we're going to send it uh, to you by email as well. But uh, as you can see, Joe just shared with us a small portion of what the different uh, hacks that he has on, on, on PowerPoint that can help you uh, use it as a tool to develop your, your, your posts. So if you like the session, if you would like to hear more or something, please uh, do evaluate the session and give us your feedback. It's very, very important for us to determine how we're going to continue with our uh, workshops. And speaking of the workshops, on May 31st, we're going to have the fifth uh, workshop, which is going to be with uh, TikTok, uh, which is the fastest growing uh, uh, social media that we have so far. And uh, the NOCs are picking up and learning a lot. And TikTok is going to come to speak to you and uh, give more tips uh, as well on how the NOCs can perform better on their platform. Uh, but uh, yet yeah, again, so now it's already past. 10 minutes. So Joe, thank you very, very much again. Most welcome. Glad to, yeah. glad to have this opportunity and I'm very honored to be with you guys today. Thank you so much.